Yo guys, Clever Like here with another Minecraft video tutorial. This time we're talking about the brand new Blockbench 1.11 update. This is the paint update. That's right, little buddy. We can customize entities and also create a custom texture right inside of Blockbench. I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to teach you all the different wacky things you need to know when you're creating custom entities for the Bedrock edition of Minecraft. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is go to the blockbench.net website to download Blockbench. Next thing you'll want to do is get a resource pack installed on your computer so that you can customize the entities using that resource pack. And to learn more about stuff like that, go to my YouTube channel. I'll put all the links in the description so you could check them out. Let's get started. So I'm going to launch Blockbench. This is the new version. First thing we want to do when creating a new entity is open up the mobs.json file. This is all of the entity descriptions for vanilla Minecraft. This is the way they're formed. And if you want to create a custom entity, you can't create your own brand new one. You have to change an existing entity. And so the best thing to do is find an entity that's going to best fit your needs for the project that you're working on. So like in this case, if I were to grab the iron golem, some of the important considerations are things like the bones in the entity and how you're going to use them. So if you look over here on the right hand side, you could see all of these folders are actually bones and the cubes are basically the components or the blocks that make up the bones. You're going to notice that some bones can have more than one cube, but since they're all part of the same bone, that means they have the same rotation, same angle, they're mounted on the same plane. So, you know, if we're going to move things, you could see they move together. You cannot, like, for instance, have the nose move in a different direction or be on a different angle from the rest of the head. They all have to stick together. The other important thing is the in-game animation. So in this case, if you look at, like, say, the arm, something like that, and look at the x-axis, you could see the arm normally moves on the x-axis. That animation is hard-coded in the game. That means you cannot customize that angle in your entity because in the game that's going to be overwritten and it's going to follow the animation that is programmed in the game. So you're going to want to be careful of that. You're going to want to leverage that animation into your own entity design. So make sure you pick an entity that supports the animation that fits the entity that you're going to need. So you can transform it to your needs as necessary. Next thing to look at is entities that have variants. So say, for instance, you want to create an entity that has a similar structure, but a bunch of different looking elements, kind of like a rabbit, for instance, that has different textures. You can take the rabbit model, customize the model to your own custom entity, and then leverage the fact that this entity can have multiple variants or multiple textures. Now, it cannot have multiple models. You can't change the actual bone structure of the rabbit from variant to variant, you can only change the texture that applies to each when you're selecting the variants. Another thing to consider is the fact that we have some models that are actually inherited by others. So for instance, if you look at the humanoid, the humanoid is actually used for a bunch of other entities. Same with a quadruped. So if you make a change to the humanoid or the quadruped, any of the entities that inherit that shape are also going to be affected. So you have to be careful when choosing those. Now, when choosing an entity to customize, my favorite thing to choose is the creeper, because I just like to pick on the creeper. So we're going to pick the creeper for this demonstration. As you can see here, the creeper is brought in, looking sharp right there. We've got the full model. We've got the bones with all the cubes already loaded in and we have the texture already on there. So let's go ahead and customize this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the creeper into a little toy helicopter for our purposes here. That means I'm gonna to have to pick the pieces I want and then customize them and get rid of the pieces that I don't want. So first thing that I don't want is the head. I don't like uh, the way that animation works in game and I don't really need that cube, so I'm going to get rid of it. And then when it comes to the legs, I'm not really needing all four legs. I'm going to use one leg for the side propeller and one for the top propeller. So we're going to get rid of those. And now we have 
basically our two animated elements and the static element, which is the body. So I think we have what we need to make this work. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the texture for now, just so I could start with some basic building blocks and then go from there. So let's get started with kind of putting together our little toy helicopter. So in this case, I'm going to need more than one cube for this particular structure. So all I can do is go over here, right click, and then say duplicate. And now I have another cube on that same bone. You can see over here the way they are part of the body bone. And now we've got uh, some more. Another thing I can do is go ahead and click on the add cube with the bone selected. And it, you see it adds that cube to the bone. Now, if this cube ends up down here at the bottom of the list all by itself, that's not good. That's uh, go probably going to screw up your JSON and cause some problems. If you're lucky, nothing will happen. But what you want to do is make sure that doesn't happen at all. Okay, so what we'll do is make sure that these end up inside of the bone that they belong to. And what I'm going to do is just put these little mounting blocks for our little rotors here. You can see how easy this program is to use, and um, I just love it. It's nice and intuitive and makes modeling a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and do another one. Now we have our next thing, which is moving on to the animating parts. So let's go ahead and pick our first leg here. Now if I click on the bone, I can see the pivot location and the axis and the angles that they're rotating on. So if I click on the actual leg here itself, I get this little crosshair up top. I'm going to click on just the bone itself. You can see that crosshair right there. And if I move it on the x-axis, you can see this is the way the creeper walks in game. That animation is going to be applied on the x-axis for this particular bone. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a one of the propellers. So we've got something there. And now we have our next one, which is if we click on this guy, click on the bone, move that X axis. You can see now we kind of have a problem because this is animating not like a horizontal propeller might behave. So what we need to do is rotate it on the Z axis. So if we just kind of see here that this kind of moves this way, if I were to rotate it on the Z axis, in the game like this, then when it animates in game, it's going to animate horizontally. So let's go ahead and tweak this here. I'm going to put it back to its normal value. And now we're going to tweak this to become our new rotor. OK, so now what we're going to do is take this guy but before we do that, I want to show you the pivot point. So you see this little crosshair here? That's the pivot point that this actually rotates on. So that's not really in a good spot because um, we want it to pivot up here. So what I'm going to do is, is move that pivot point. So you can see here I can change the Y. You can see that crosshair is moving now. And so we can go ahead and kind of just keep shuffling it around until it gets right exactly where we need it. Um, so there we go. Let's take it on the Z axis here. And you know, that's, that's kind of thick. Let's get rid of that. Let's, there we go. Go on here and then rotate this like that. Now, let's just make sure if I right click here and go to rotation, you can see 90 degrees. That looks good. And so now I need to basically move it into position. So let's see here. If I move the X, it actually moves up and down with the X because I've rotated it, right? So we're going to have to just kind of manipulate this to be in the position that we want. And let's go, oops. There we go. Okay, that looked good. Let's do 
do this here. If I change this uh, width, there we go. Oops. It's a little confusing when you rotate it and then try to tweak it some more. But I think we have something that looks okay. It's kind of silly little helicopter, but let's check it out now. Let's go ahead and check this model in game. So all I can do is go here and say save. It's going to overwrite the mobs that chase on file, but it's only going to change the entity that we're messing around with. So if I go back into my demo, what are we going to see here? We see our little helicopter. Uh-oh, we have a problem. You see that? We didn't change the pivot point for that rear rotor. So let's go ahead and fix that. And we also have to now fix the texture. You can see here it's using the current creeper texture. We need to make our own. Let's go do that. So if I go back over here and click on this leg, you see this rotation pivot point is all the way over here. Let's fix that. So that is the correct spot for it. So I think we are good now to move on to the texture. I'm going to show you the texture creating. So where it says blank texture, I'm going to create blank. And I'm going to say creeper. And generate template, clear uh, or transparent background. And for the resolution, I'm going to do 16, which is kind of like that standard Minecraft resolution. And then I'm going to say confirm. So right now, in this case, our, our texture is a bitmap that's saved in memory. And we can go ahead and start using the great new features of Blockbench 1.11, the paintbrush. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the fill. And I'll pick like a red color. And I'm going to fill in all of the helicopter body as red. So one of the things I like to do also is sometimes just hide some of the other bones that I don't want to accidentally paint on because whatever you click on will get the paint. And the way the fill works, it doesn't work kind of like a flood fill that has a threshold. It just fills in the entire face. So you have to be careful. And here we go. All right. So there's our red helicopter. Now let's go ahead and hide the body. Hide the body. Uh, let's, let's be careful how we use that term. Hashtag hide the body if you've made it this far. Um, people might question you, but you know, it's fun. So let's go ahead and get these propellers on the rear or all the propellers. Let's turn them yellow. So I'm going to start turning everything yellow here. Looking good. And just kind of rotate things around. I'm just clicking on these sides and filling in the entire side with that color. So that's what that fill tool is doing for us. And these are needing to be done as well. So I think we're all good there. And if we turn the body back on here, looks like we have a little mishap. So if I hold Alt and click, I can pick up the color. Because this palette, there's no palette of saved colors here. It's just a new palette selector. So like an eyedropper tool would be alt click to pick up the color and then you can go ahead and use it that way. So it looks like we're pretty good here. Let's go ahead and do some more tools here. So the next thing I want to do is show you the noise tool. So the noise tool allows me to say for instance make this a little bit darker here and then make the size a little bigger, change the softness a little bit. Same thing I'm going to go through and uh, hide the legs this time and then draw with a noise tool on here to create a darkness on the helicopter. See how that works? That's kind of cool. If I make this a little lighter, I could do something like that on the bottom. It's kind of just going to town, isn't it? I'm, I'm going a little crazy there. Let's see if I make it even lighter. Wow, that's kind of cool. Um, so there we have it with the noise tool. 
could change the softness or the opacity and also the size and that kind of makes it more scattered. So that is a great tool for creating that traditional Minecraft texture real easily. Next thing I want to do here is reduce the size a little bit more, make this white, and let's try kind of creating a little cockpit window. Here, just kind of clicking, trying to find that right level. And one of the things that's cool about this is if I go into the UV editor, I can also customize the way this looks. So if I go into, like, say, normal mode, and then I'll make my brush, uh, I'll reduce the softness and the size to just one. So now I have, like, a one-pixel brush. I can go over here and start clicking and painting that one-pixel paint on there, which is pretty cool. Okay? So that's another way of kind of customizing things. So that's really helpful and really awesome with this new tool. Thank you so much for Blockbench 1.11. All right, so there we go. And let's go turn back on these other bones here. And last thing I want to do is kind of randomize the pattern on the uh, propellers here. So I'll pick, pick up the color, and then I'm going to get our noise brush going again and click on these guys looking good you can make it a little bigger so that you can get it all in kind of one one shot there boom 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 all right looking good okay all right so there we go with our entity Now we are ready to put this thing together and put it inside Minecraft. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to save. Again, I have new UV mappings for my texture, so I need to save that mobs.json file so all these new mappings over here get saved. And remember, it just overwrites the part of the mobs.json that you changed. And now with the texture, important thing with the texture is that we've been working with texture in memory, and we need to now export it as a file. So if we go right-click on here and say Export, we have an option to export it as a file so we can overwrite in our resource pack the texture, which is great. Another thing is export and link. That kind of exports it out of memory into a file and then links to that file. That's helpful for editing the texture inside of another graphics program like Photoshop or something like that. So you make changes in Photoshop, save it, and then you could refresh the texture here and that texture will apply here. So if you don't want to use the Blockbench tools or you need something special, you can use the link part to do that update. I'm going to do the export of the texture here, overwrite it, and go back to the game and check it out. And there it is. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates and leave a like for me. Go ahead and comment if you have any questions. I always do my best to try to answer those. And follow me on Twitter and go ahead and share your creations. So when you make something cool, go ahead and tweet it to me. I'd love to see it and follow all of your progress on Twitter. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.